What's going on here, guys? Um, we had another major breakthrough with the system. Uh, I'll just show you exactly what is going on and what it can uh, do now. So I'll flip the camera, and the system is completely self-sustaining now. I'll explain what occurs and how to do this is linked in the PDF. Um, here's our input supercapacitor. This input, as you see it is charging, this input runs a 0 to 120 volt DC boost converter which powers up our transmitter, which is right there. The transmitter has the ball on it. Now, because it's a transmitter, we're into a separate electrical system. Now our receiver coil is in resonance with the transmitter. Because it's in resonance, our power output is equal to, if not greater, than what the transmitter can provide. And because it's high frequency, we store that energy into a super cap, and the high frequency charges it very quickly. And then from that super cap, it's regulated with a charge controller, goes to an inverter, and from the inverter, I'm having it recharge itself. So, the system is self-sustaining now. It does recharge. And I earth-grounded the resonant receiver coil back into the negative of the battery. So this should turn green soon because it is self-sustaining. And there we go, that turned green. Which means the system is charged. This is what feeds the transmitter. Transmitter is consuming 2.50 watts, extremely energy efficient. We still have radiant energy effects. And these are just the metal handles I mounted on the piece of wood to make it more portable. As you see, there's nothing around my desk. There's nothing here anywhere. Nothing underneath it. Get that up and walk around. It's nothing anywhere. This is a separate electrical system. The receiver is earth grounded, gets a boost in power to run the system. And I don't like this inverter. It is way too noisy. And that fan is probably wasting power, so. Anyway, the system is self sustaining now. And we still got radiant energy. Next, I'll try and plug a halogen bulb into this spot to show you what it can do. And now unplug the maintainer. It's still green because it charged our input super cap. And it says, oh, you have such a low power draw, the power is still green. So I'll move that. And this is exciting. And as you see, the radiant energy is everywhere. Even on the USB ports in the inverter. It even glows just bringing it near the inverter. Radiant energy is everywhere in this friggin' thing. And I might sell this thing for either 1500 bucks or three grand. This whole kit on a board. Um, I'm not quite finished with it. I might add some more storage here. Another super cap. Maybe a solar panel. In case the system ever runs down for whatever reason. And it needs that uh, boost. So... I'm going to do a video too, setting this up in my work shed. I'm going to connect this halogen light. But yeah, you basically go in and out of inverter systems with this type of energy. Oh my god. So there we go. I can't even look at that. Load on the transmitter, still 2.5 watts. Input. 1.358 we are still green we're draining the, tr the receiver's super cap though and once I disconnect the load it will begin to recharge and I smell something smoking
as you see it begins to recharge very rapidly once I disconnect the load. Again, I'll reconnect. We still do that. I'm going to back up, show you everything, show that we still have radiant energy. That bulb is just drowning everything out. I got that resonant receiver coil's output, the wireless one, to about 1 amp DC, over 1 amp, at about 40 volts, and then it goes through a solar charge controller, which then dumps into a super tap, and because it's high fre frequency, it supercharges it very quickly, so, as you see, I'll disconnect the 150 watt halogen, and um, we begin to recharge the system rather rapidly. Say 12.8 soon. Yep, 12.8. So we're recharging. <laughs> I'm gonna need to make some kind of AC pulse circuit. I will then connect um, this maintainer again that maintains the input super cap back into the um, the resident receiver coils power system. And it will turn green after a while because it is self-sustaining. So we're going to show that on video. It will probably turn green in less than five minutes. Um, everything is mounted on the board except for the resident receiver coil so I can slide it and adjust it for uh, tuning. And as you see, the input is being recharged from uh, from the output of the resident receiver coil and the um, tank circuit. When I say tank, I mean the super cap acts as a tank for the high frequency energy. In the resident receiver coil, once you get an output equal to your transmitter's output, you don't use that power directly. That's a mistake where most people go wrong. You have to dump that power into a storage system that recharges super quick. And as you see, we're now green. We're now green, and we are recharging everything. The system is now maintained. Slightly draining because it reached a full charge. This turned green, so it shut off. We're not drawing power. Now we're starting to draw a little bit of power. And as you see, that will be going up then on the input. It's fluctuating. It never goes below, uh... I've never seen it go below 13, and I've been doing this all day. It bounces between 13.8 and 13.5. And I didn't even have to um, earth ground the resident receiver coil. I just sent the grounding of the resident receiver coil to the negative of the battery. I mean, not the battery, the super cap, sorry. I keep calling them batteries because they look like batteries and they're not, the super caps. Ugh. It's been a long few days, but very rewarding none the least. Again, I'll sum up quickly what is going on. This super cap runs our this super cap powers up our DC boost converter. 
DC boost converter gives us fine control over the transmitter. Transmitter which is optimized transmits wireless power to the resident receiver. The resident receiver gets a gain in power once you earth ground the um, L2, the secondary, into the negative of the power supply. Your, um, your super cap are an actual earth ground connection. So that's where the gain in power comes from. The high frequency goes through a um, Scotty, a full bridge rectifier made out of Scotty diodes. You need those. They're super fast, high switching. That high switching rapidly recharges the super cap. But I send it through a solar charge controller so we can't overcharge the super cap on accident. And the super cap powers up the inverter that runs your large loads. So that's how it works. And you need that tank of storage. It will not work without the tank. That's probably where many people go wrong. So I have a PDF that's 15 bucks I sell. Details fully how to design this thing. Um, as you see, you, we're now using a Tesla coil the correct way for power generation. Like, we're not using the stupid, twisted, academia's version of it to make big sparks. That's not what it was designed for. It was designed to produce power without producing wasteful spark discharges, and we're actually doing that. We put that theory to test here, and it's working. So, this is very exciting. As you see, the sparks off this device are very minimal. I'll touch it. There's almost no sparks off this device. But it's optimized for magnetic resonance. But yet, yeah, the transmitter is drawing 2.51 watts, and we still have all this radiant energy. And these effects do not, uh, do not place a load on the transmitter when they occur. We're transforming that high magnetic flux into, um electricity once we go about earth grounding it the correct way which would be through the series connected L2 capacitor of a uh, receiver coil so I fully detail how to do all this in my guidebooks in the PDF that will be in the link in the description um, I don't want this video to go on longer than 15 minutes I'll bring out my special meter absolutely fried this meter it's trash now I'll bring out my uh, special nice meter. And we'll hold on, I'm gonna have to end the video. Someone's calling me.